Okay, so according to um, ESPN's um, Dan Rayfield, here's the way I look at it. Dan Rayfield is the guy because he's, of course, ESPN. He has that direct line to the um, boxing promoters. So basically, you can take his, like, he, he, how can I put it? They don't really have a connection really too much with the boxers, but they do have a solid connection with the uh, promoters. So basically, long story short, we've been hearing for um, quite some time that Al Heyman's Felix Diaz was in the mix to fight Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, WBC, and WBO Unified 140-pound champion. On Tea Street Controversy, this is Tea Street Controversy Live. Now, looking at the resume of Felix Diaz. Now, he is short for the division. He's about five foot five. So he does a lot of moving. He doesn't, you know, he's not a toe-to-toe -to -toe fighter. And if he does, well, he's supposed to be fighting Terrence Crawford on May the 20th up in Omaha. Now, here's the thing with that. Felix Diaz is a very good boxer. He's not Cuban school. He's Dominican, but he's a very good boxer and Olympian. You know, very good amateur background. So he's seen bigger fighters before. You know, and also he's southpaw, which if you've noticed... Terrence Crawford has had is very skilled at neutralizing Southpaw fighters from what we've seen so far by adjusting the Southpaw himself, taking away their advantage, even though it takes him a round or two, you know, sometimes two we've seen because he does it. He, he's been doing it even before Gambo. You know, it takes him a couple of rounds to adjust, but once he adjusts, it's almost like he's a Southpaw. So you can expect for him to do that, but what I see is you're going to see Felix Diaz move doing a lot of moving and Terrence Crawford is really going to have to show his ability to be able to cut off the ring. Now, here's the thing. Adrian Granados was also in the mix. But according to uh, Dan Raphael, Adrian, I mean, uh, HBO didn't want Adrian Granados. And truth be told, I didn't either. You know, I understand it would have been a good fight. You know, like, you know, on paper. Not, no, not on paper a good fight for fans. But on paper, it's like, yo, this is a unified champion. And this guy just technically lost to Broner, even though it was a robbery in many's eyes. Still, it's like, come on. You know, you can't really sell that. So if you look at the 140-pound division, now Terrence Crawford is in a situation where now he's got to, um, you know, like, unify and move up. Fans are calling for him to fight Manny Pacquiao. Listen, I want to see the fight, but I don't see it happening anytime soon, so it's hard for me to really, really waste my time talking about it. Now when it comes to the WBA, you got um Ricky Burns who he beat already in the division below. So basically remember, he's the WBC, he beat Victor Postol. He's the WBO. You know he um he um beat Ricky Burns who's the WBA and then you have uh Julie Zandango who's fighting Ricky Burns for the WBA and the IBF. So basically he's one fight potentially away from being undisputed champion. So this is what I say about this undisputed champion thing. It's like any fighters that want to move to 140, now you got to go through Terrence Crawford. You know, and also what we've seen is Terrence Crawford and Bob Arum they, well, Bob Arum and Terrence Crawford have been able to work with Al Heyman fighters because he fought John Molina, who's an Al Heyman fighter. He's now fighting Felix Diaz, who's an Al Heyman fighter. Also, Felix Diaz has that win over Sammy Vasquez, and a lot of people felt he should have beat uh, Lamont Peterson. So that's a, not a lot, enough momentum and enough on his resume for fans to be like, okay, all right, this guy, you know, I really want to see him, you know, or how he does against a Terrence Crawford. You see what I'm saying? So... You know, I, I think this is a fan that fans shouldn't bitch about, you know, and the fact that we're getting on regular HBO and not pay-per-view, even though they, they couldn't put him on pay-per-view. But if you look at the 140-pound division, and when you have guys like Mikey Garcia saying they're going to move up, that's where I want to really see how the politics are going to play in, because we don't know, you know, if Mikey Garcia is Richard Schaefer or not. I'm starting to believe that he's not. Maybe he's some type of free agent, but he hasn't officially signed with Al Heyman. As we or that or or as far as the media is concerned, all with Richard Schaefer, but yet he's fighting under both under their banners. You see what I'm saying? So I would love to see Terrence Crawford versus Mikey Garcia. You know, especially if Mikey Garcia decides to move to 140. But we just don't know how long Terrence Crawford's going to stay at 140 himself. But like I said, you know, if he wins, either him or Felix Diaz are going to be unified champion. And then you also have another unification fight, which a video I'm going to have coming out against uh, Ricky Burns and um, Ndongu for the WBA and the IBF. Terrence Crawford already beat Ricky Burns. What if Ricky Burns beats Ndongu? 
You see what I'm saying? So you know, it's a it's it's a, it's it's a nice little story right there. But one of but between Felix Diaz, between those four fighters, between Felix Diaz and Dongu, Terence Crawford and Ricky Burns, one of them can probably be undisputed champion before Golovkin or Canelo or Billy Joe Saunders or whoever it's going to be, or Andre Ward or or Sergey Kovalev or Donna Peterson Peterson or uh, Sean Monaghan. If you really, really, really understand what I'm saying. But anyway, I'm Tistro Controversy. This is Tistro Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. All the links to my social media right there below in the description box. Please subscribe.